Healthy democracies require healthy relationships among citizens and their governments. Keeping these relationships healthy requires a constant commitment to listening, learning, and always working to do better. It needs an authentic effort to reach consensus, compromise when necessary, and accept that we won't, and in fact should not, win every debate. And it takes humility to realize that no single party or person has all the best ideas. Citizens and those elected to serve must also understand the point of view, the goals and the fears of those whom we disagree. The health of democratic nations themselves depends on listening to and considering other perspectives. What we've experienced in the U.S. from both major parties is a steady erosion of the basic civility and respect that's so essential to the health of our democratic republic. Some of this is by accident, and unfortunately, some of it is by design. Just 11 months ago, for example, we saw our president fuel a campaign to undermine and try to overturn the results of a free, fair, and legal election. The election was overseen by nonpartisan officials across the country and validated by governors of both political parties, which proved the system worked and the values of democracy prevailed when tested. Yet, we can't lose sight of the fact that one person's ego led us to a very low moment in American history. This is a powerful reminder of why we must always guard against authoritarianism and the manipulation of would-be dictators from both the right and the left. It's critical for our nation to humbly reflect on these events and the many years leading up to them and learn from it to make our nation and all democracies more durable. Because democracy is only as strong as our commitment to it, and we can't let our guard down. In his farewell to the nation, Republican Senator John McCain, someone I greatly admired, reminded Americans that the power of democracies is in their relentlessly optimistic commitment to freedom, fairness, and human rights. He warned, however, that these systems are weakened when we confuse patriotism with tribal rivalries that have sown resentment, hatred, and violence in all the corners of the globe. Political polarization, what Senator McCain called tribal rivalries, is one of the most greatest threats to our nations and our ability to protect human rights. When we stop listening and learning from each other, when we can't debate issues and find common ground in the path forward, when we refuse to consider another person's point of view or insist one party or politician is always right or always wrong, we're eroding core democratic values. And make no mistake, other nations who don't share our commitment to the fundamental rights of all people use these fractures to destabilize and divide us further. Now, to be clear, a vigorous and healthy debate is a good thing. It ensures that tough questions are asked, ideas are tested, and different perspectives are heard. Unfortunately, we've reached a tipping point where political debates and activism have turned intensely personal sometimes downright hateful, at a time when our challenges are in desperate need of more dialogue and understanding. The words of war, like assault and attack, are too frequently used around issues like budget choices or tax policy. Debates are often described as battles. And when legitimate policy debates are characterized in the terms of violence and war, people stop listening and become defensive, fearful, and angry. The opportunity for real discussion and compromise slips away. 
frustration grows. The divide deepens. The relationship between citizens is poisoned by hyperpartisanship, and the destructive cycle of polarization repeats. Worse yet, this divisiveness fuels hate and violence. But in a democracy, there's always hope. We know by working together, we can reverse these trends. Calvin Coolidge, a Republican and America's 30th president, who grew up in my state of Vermont, wisely said, the only way I know to drive out evil from the country is by filling it with good. Filling the world with good created by healthy democracies is the best way to guard against authoritarianism. By expanding liberty and justice, we show how to engage in complex debates with both conviction and civility, improve the strength of every nation in its, in its diversity of people and opinion. Democracies are a beacon of personal and economic freedom and opportunity. They cast a bright, hopeful, and optimistic light in stark contrast to the dark and oppressive regimes elsewhere. If we follow this path, if we fill the world with good and set the example, we'll rise above those who seek to dim the bright light of democracy and democratic societies will flourish across the globe. Again, thanks for taking part in this important discussion and listening to my thoughts. I look forward to hearing more of yours as well. I'm now very pleased to turn the floor over to my friend and colleague, Governor Janet Mills, the governor of the great state of Maine. Hello, I'm Maine's Governor Janet Mills. Governor Phil Scott and I are of different political parties, but we're proud to work together on many things. Perhaps because we both hail from New England, where our towns still engage in town meeting, the purest form of democracy. It's when all members of the community, teachers, students, firefighters, farmers, rich and poor, young and old, have an equal voice and an equal vote in the decisions of the day. Sometimes it's a bit rough and tumble, a little bit of friction, discord and rivalry, but it's rarely about political party. It's always about policy and it's civil because we know we'll run into each other again the next day around town. Sometimes citizens sit down after town meeting and break bread together. It's perhaps because of that tradition that we New England governors, three Republicans and three Democrats, have managed to rise above party and work together through troubled times like the current pandemic. The democratic process isn't always pretty, and it's not meant to be easy. Nationally, there's fierce debate among people with differing opinions, and some of it's pretty acrimonious. It's that acrimony that captures the attention of the media and the headline writers. But those headlines often overshadow the hard work of those who work hand in hand with each other in good faith to reach common ground and to solve the problems of the day. That's the work I'm so proud of here in Maine, where despite disagreements, lawmakers of all political parties are dedicated to making life better for the people. Republicans, Democrats, and independents in our state joined to pass legislation that I signed into law to protect health care coverage for Maine people with pre-existing conditions and to regulate prescription drugs. We passed a bipartisan budget that fully funds public education, that helps families, small businesses, homeowners, and renters, and that sends money back to Maine people who worked during the pandemic. We came together as Democrats, Republicans, and independents to enact laws that combat climate change through conservation and aggressive renewable portfolio standards, putting us on track to become carbon neutral by 2045. And we came together to create the Maine Connectivity Authority to expand high-speed internet across the state, investing millions in new federal funding, thank you, Mr. President, to make broadband accessible and affordable for all our people. People crossed party lines to get these important things done. That's democracy in action. In Maine, we welcome and encourage everyone to participate in their government by voting. 
And to make that easier, I signed into law measures for online voter registration and for automatic voter regist registration. Safe access to the ballot box has been particularly important during the COVID-19 pandemic. But last year, about 78% of all eligible Maine people turned out to vote in the general election, one of the highest voter participation rates in the country. And around 60% of them voted absentee, often using our new secure ballot drop boxes. We adapted to preserve our precious right to vote without sacrificing the health of our people. Here in Maine and across New England, we will continue to bring people of all political parties together to solve problems and strengthen democracy.